How's it going everyone? Adam here from Coding Basics and welcome to tutorial number 18 in my introduction to Python series. Before we start, just like to remind you, you can go to my website codingbasics.ca, click on Python to get uh, written tutorials, um, as well as anything I forget in the videos I'll put in there. For some reason my internet at home is really slow, but anyway, go there, click on Python, whole list of tutorials there that you can go through. Um, and yeah, check it out. So, now, as far as this video goes, I'm going to show you how to make a class. Now, uh, I actually already have the code here. I'll explain it. I'm actually going to delete it and redo it, but I wanted to show you why these are useful. Um, so, I'm already, just go over to PowerShell. I'm already in the folder where I have this saved. So, I'm going to type in Python minus I, uh, sorry, uh, classes dot py now even when I got classes it took me a while to accept why they're useful slash important this is why um, if you're making some application like a school marking program for example then uh, you can um, you know you kind of want a template for each student so each student should have a name and age um, you know, the corresponding grades, you know, maybe somewhere where it keeps track of any of their allergies or medical needs sort of thing. So just like a database for students, you want a template, you don't want to have to, uh, you know, create a variable called, just say we had a student named Johnny and Jill. You don't want to create like Johnny's name and just, you know, have a program because then you'd have to, you know, you'd have to know the person's name. It's just, it's not good practice. We'd have to create a variable like something like this for each student. And you'd have to hard code that into one of these dot Python files. Well no, if we make a template, we can uh, create new students as we need them. So here I got this student class. So I can set Johnny equal to student. Oops, it's a capital S and then pass in the information. So in this case, our student has a first name, a last name, and an age. So, oops, back to PowerShell. So first name, we'll give him Johnny. And last name will be Smith. And then age, nine. All right, and now we have our uh, student object. And when we reference Johnny, um, you can see here, it's it, it's saying it's a student class, and it's an instance of this student class. All this has to do with what how it's stored in memory, but anyway, enough of this. I was just showing why they're useful. Let's just go over how to code them. So, I'm just going to delete this whole code. So, let's get started. We got to start by using the class. It's a keyword, so it'll turn blue, and we're going to... Uh, call it student, open close brackets, and this is going to be our class. Now last video I went over uh, classes have instance variables and instance methods. Instance variables are variables associated with that class. Instance methods are methods that uh, are part of the class that do certain things. So if I uh, um, for instance variables, let's start there. Sorry, I'm just trying to get all my thoughts together. So, for each class we make, we need to initialize it. And what we're going to do is this define underscore underscore init method. That, this is used to initialize. And the first thing we have to pass in is self. And in here is where we can keep all the instance variables for our class. This is where they are created. So, what does self mean? It means this instance of this class. So, uh, for example, in this example here, um, self would just be talking about the Johnny instance of the student class. So, I'm going to um, first, let's store the first name. So, self dot first underscore name. And now we have to set this equal to something. 
well, we don't know. We, we're just making a template here for someone else to use to create a new student. Not every student's going to have the same name. So we somehow have to uh, get a variable that has a first name in it to apply here. Well, when we create it, an instance of this student class here, you'll notice I passed a couple things in. They go after self here. So, for example, FN. That would be first name that we passed in. LN is going to be last name, and A is going to be age. So, here is where our arguments that are passed in when a new student is created. That's where they go. And you only have to do this for this init method. It's the only time when it's being initialized. Now, uh, so we're going to do the same thing for last name. So, self dot last underscore name equals LN, and then self dot age equals age or sorry a um, now that's our init method we've initialized it and each student class is going to have these three instance variables now like I said we could add in grades you know um, special medical needs stuff like that but this is just going to be a basic example and I'm actually gonna leave it right there for now save it and we're gonna run what we got right now now, uh, actually, before I do, you know, no, 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 I'll wait for the end to do that. Um, so I'm going to quit out, relaunch this file, and now we can create a new file um, or a new instance of our student class. So let's create Johnny again. Actually, I can just go back to what I had. So Johnny, we'll create him. So everything works fine. We now have... Um, uh, instance of our student class, a uh, student named Johnny, uh, his first name, his last name, and his age. And now we can reference the different stuff about him. So, Johnny dot age returns 9. That is his age. So, it's saying what this dot means is pretty much go inside. Um, so, take the Johnny class, go inside it, and find his age. And that's what it does. Um, and we can do the same thing for first name and last name, of course, but I'm not going to. And now I'll just watch when I type in Johnny. Same thing as before. It's, it's saying an instance of the student class where it is saved in memory. But what happens if we want to print out Johnny, you know? We want to print out this student name or something. So print out Johnny. All it's going to do is print out the same thing where it's stored in memory. We would probably want it to say like, you know, Johnny Smith or, you know, Johnny Smith age nine, something like that. Well, here comes another built-in method. Uh, so this one is the this string method. So define underscore underscore str. And inside these brackets, we're going to pass in self once again. Remember for each uh, method inside a class, you have to pass in self if you want access to the instance variables of the class. Now, what do we got to do here? We need to return a string for use. So, when printing out in Python, Python looks for this method first. If there is this method, it'll print out whatever you return. Otherwise, it's just going to print out this generic um, instance student method thing. Um, so, what we got to do is return. So, we're going to do a return statement, and we're just going to return a string which is we what we want the uh, um, class to print out as when it's being printed. So all we're going to do is we're going to print out um, self dot last name and we're going to comma first name. Normally they go by uh, like last name and attendances and stuff like that so we're going to do that. All right, and now let's run this again. All right, now when we print Johnny, okay, we got an error here. Oops, I put seld instead of self. Just a typo. All right, quit out again. Here we go. This time should work fine. Where is print Johnny? Oh, there it is. Okay. 
So, and as you see, it printed out what we wanted. So it prints out the last name, comma, first name. And you could add an age, stuff like that. You get the idea. This is just you're returning some sort of string which is used to represent the entire class in some way when being printed out. Now, one thing I want to do here is uh, create another class called John. So to say you have two Johns in the class, but one of them goes by Johnny. Um, or sorry, you have two Johnnies in the class, one goes by John, say. So everything else about them is the same for some reason. Uh, Alright, and we're going to create this. What happens when we type in John equals equals Johnny? Alright, so what do you think is going to happen? False. It's saying, even though everything about them is the same, for some reason, it's saying false. This is about equality, which I'm going to go over a bit more in a later tutorial. But one thing, when it comes to classes, they're only equal by default if it's the exact same class. So if I did a, I'm just going to say J equals John, it's just going to duplicate that. So if I say J equals equals John, it's going to be true because you're just making a copy of the object. Basically, you're creating a new variable name, but it's referencing the same place in memory. So, up here, where you see this, each time you create a new class, that class instance is stored at some place in memory. The variable name, so in this case up here, Johnny, that's just a pointer. It's, it's a variable name which you use to reference it, and it's, it basically points to where you like where in memory which in this case is this location where the class information is stored for that instance hoping that makes sense in this case here you're just creating another pointer that points to the exact same spot as John so that's equal but up here it's not but we in our minds think that must be equal because they have the same age and name well yet again we have another built-in method so define underscore underscore eq underscore underscore and we're going to pass in self and this here we had to return some sort of boolean which determines if they are true or not now I actually lied you get to pass in self but you also have to pass in other and what this means is this class as well as another class that it's being compared to so in this case we're gonna say that two classes are equal if self dot first underscore name equals equals other dot first underscore name and if self dot last underscore name is equal to other dot last underscore name and that is how it's going to work let's run this once again so I got to create two classes now uh, Johnny and John and now you'll see that it's true that these two are equal because their first name is the same and their last name is the same uh, if you guys want to learn more about these methods you can look them up here. Uh, go to um, just type in Python data models. And if my internet would load. Oh, come on, come on. All right. Well, while that's loading, let's just go back to Notepad. There are, you don't have to use the built-in uh, methods though, you can make your own. So I can create a method called define, um, and just give it really any name. So define, say, hello, for example. And I'm going to pass in self, and what I can do is just print out a message so print hello self dot first 
underscore name. How are you? Now let's run this again. Uh, I gotta quit out. So if I type in Johnny dot say hello, now I've got a problem here. My apologies for that pause. All you gotta do is I forgot open close brackets. That's what you have to do to call a method. I was doing it if this was a variable. So if it's a variable, you don't need uh, open close brackets. But if you're calling an instance method, you need to use brackets. So I did here. So Johnny that say hello. Hello Johnny, how are you? Just like we wanted. Now, uh, also that being said, you could um, do the same thing with our underscore underscore str method if you wanted to. It's a method. You can call it. And it returns... Uh, you know, the string that would be turn return if we were printing it out. Uh, and, oh, I did check while I had that video paused. It did load for me, so it's this uh, page right here. Um, when it loads, scroll down, it goes over different methods you can use, and you'll see some of the ones I was talking about, like the underscore underscore EQ method, and the underscore underscore STR underscore underscore method. So built-in methods that have a purpose, um, it's not loading fast enough. I'm not going to wait. This video is already dragged on longer than I wanted it to. So that's all I got for you guys this time. Thanks once again for watching. Remember to leave a comment on this video, like this video, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.